Rise and shine. You're watching WCTV Eyewitness News. The Good Morning Show starts now. All right, look at that. Of course, that's not in our area, mm -mm. but it is a weather stem live view of Atlanta, Georgia. Yeah, that looks like it's pretty close to where the new ballpark is. Yes, yes, it looks nice up there, but I bet you it's cooler than it is here. Uh, probably a pretty safe bet. Uh -huh. uh, lots of fun things going on there today, of course. The yes. big celebration for Jackie Robinson. Mm-hmm. Jackie Robinson being celebrated by the Braves. Michelle Roberts gets we'll to We'll go up there with the Boys and Girls Club from, from around yeah. here, so that's very cool. That uh, is cool. And it's going to be, it should be a great day. Yeah, I've that. learned a lot of people don't even know that Jackie Robinson was from Cairo. Right. So this is pretty cool that the, the Boys and Girls Club yeah. from Cairo get to go. Very and cool. And so you say they get to have nice weather? Oh, it should be great weather. should oh, be great weather. And we have uh, it around here. We We've got it around here for sure. As m most of what we're going to be experiencing, I think, over the next day or so is going to be a whole bunch of the good stuff. And it probably lasts more than a day or so. I see our next chance to bring in anything other than the really good stuff coming on maybe Tuesday or Wednesday. Boy, it's a long walk to get all the way over here from right over there. Uh, 61 in Tallahassee, 61 in Live Oak, 61 in Perry. It's 58 in Bainbridge. It's 59 in Valdosta. So starting near 60, which is pretty normal for this time of the year. I don't see anything on the radar picture. I don't see anything on the radar anywhere in the southeast. You got to go way up into parts of the Midwest and the Great Lakes. And yeah, they're still getting snow up there. The story for us over the next few days is going to be about a big bubble of high pressure off the Carolina coast. And as long as it stays where it is, our breeze keeps coming in from the east. The air keeps sinking and drying and we're going to get a whole lot of sunshine. I've been saying it for the last couple of days. If we had this set up in like July or August, man, would it be hot out there? But thankfully we have it here in April and it's really nice out there. I think we're going to watch those temperatures get just a little warmer over the next few days, probably low to mid 80s today, likely mid 80s or even into the upper 80s. Sunday and Monday. I'll break it all down full forecast again in just a couple of minutes. We begin this half hour with our continuing coverage of the bombshell developments in the Dan Markell murder case. Yesterday morning, U.S. Marshals arresting his brother in law in the murder for hire plot eight years later. This after a Leon County grand jury indicted him Wednesday night. Adelson is now the fourth person arrested since the FSU professor was gunned down in his driveway in 2014. Sigfredo Garcia, Luis Rivera and Catherine McBanawa all arrested in 2016 and now Charlie Adelson is facing charges of murder, conspiracy and solicitation. Our Savannah Kelly was at the Leon County Courthouse yesterday. Now she was first to speak with prosecutors about the arrest and has more. This video captures a 2016 meeting of Charlie Adelson and Catherine Magbanawa in a Miami restaurant. Prosecutors say it gave a Leon County grand jury reason to indict Charlie Adelson eight years after the murder of Dan Markell. That recording includes statements of Charles Adelson, which can be heard now for the first time. FSU professor Dan Markell was shot and killed after pulling into the driveway of his home in Benton Hills back in 2014. Prosecutors claim Charlie Adelson, through his girlfriend, Mag Banawa, hired the hitman for the killing. All to end a custody battle between Markell and his ex-wife, who is Charlie Adelson's sister. During Mag Banawa's first trial in 2019, Markell's ex-wife testified about comments her brother made about hiring a hitman. Did he ever joke about he looked into hiring a hitman, but buying you a TV as a divorce present would be cheaper? He did make that joke. Charlie Adelson's attorneys maintain his innocence. In a statement to WCTV, they claim the prosecutors have no new information that led to his arrest. In a statement, Dan Markell's family thanked the state attorney's office, FBI, and other local law enforcement for working for the last eight years to get justice for Dan Markell. And we've got much more on Charlie Adelson's arrest, including the full transcripts of that newly enhanced recording and lots of background material on the Dan Markell murder case. It's all on our website. Read it at WCTV.TV. All right, it's 633 now, and the fight between Disney and the governor is escalating over a controversial new law limiting discussion of sexual identity in public schools. As Manuel Bajorquez reports, a bill is now headed to the governor's desk that will end a special tax district for Disney. 
when Disney World was still just an idea. Walt Disney. The Disney family lobbied Florida officials to create a special improvement district governed by Disney and called Reedy Creek. It taxes itself to provide roads, power, and some emergency services. That was 1967. This was the governor's call to lawmakers this week. But they also will be considering termination of all special districts that were enacted in Florida prior to 1968. The move comes after Disney publicly condemned Florida's parental rights and education law, which critics call Don't Say Gay, because it prohibits public school instruction on topics related to sexual orientation or gender identity in grades K through 3. Is this retaliation? No, I don't think so. But I think that when you kick the hornet's nest, I think sometimes issues rise up that you weren't aware of. Republican State Representative Randy Fine co-sponsored the bill to strip Disney, the state's largest private employer, of self-governing status. Disney's charter allows them to build a nuclear power plant. It allows them to build roads without having to follow Florida Department of Transportation standards. And these are not things that may make a lot of sense. Maybe they did 55 years ago, but they don't today. Fine claims taxpayers won't end up footing the bill if Disney's status goes away. But some say local residents could still end up paying for it, while the district's $1 billion debt from bonds remains an open question. And it's kind of shocking that they would come after Disney for this. Says Aubrey Jewett, a political science professor at the University of Central Florida. If they do it to Disney, who's been so supportive of Republicans over the last 20 years and so important to Florida's economy, then who wouldn't they do it to? Now, if the bill becomes law, Disney, one of the state's largest employers, they could renegotiate with lawmakers. Meanwhile, that swift vote taking away not only Reedy Creek, but also five other special districts. Two of them are in our area. Madison Glaser talked with the Development Authority about the impacts this is having on them. She joins us now live in the studio with more. Madison. Lenitra, I talk with Economic Development Director Chad Mathis, who tells me things right now are in the very beginning stages. He says they didn't receive a heads up by the government about the vote, instead finding out Tuesday morning around 1045. With conversations just starting, he says they don't have an exact dollar amount for how much this project will cost, but it's going to be very expensive. However, he does not believe this will have a negative impact on Hamilton County Development Authority in any way. Mathis says in the meantime, they will continue business as usual. We were awarded a jobs growth grant uh, in the amount of $5.4 million that we, we were just um, awarded on April 5th uh, with the governor coming to town and uh, presenting the county uh, board of commissioners with that check. And so I think, you know, everything uh, is good. We're just going to have to go through this process. Mathis has been in contact with House District 7 c Jason Schof and has provided him with the Hamilton County's Development Authority's charter. Now that charter will have to be reestablished through a House bill by June 2023 or operations will be seized. The East Point Water and Sewer District in Franklin County is also impacted by this vote. Now we have reached out to them for comment, but so far have not heard back. Lenitra. All right, thank you so much, Madison, for that report. Time now for First Alert Weather with meteorologist Rob Nucatola. If you like the mostly sunny and the warm, you're going to love this forecast. If you like the cooler stuff, it's starting to feel more and more like it's getting pushed farther back in the rearview mirror. I think top temperatures today have a pretty good shot to get into those middle 80s, and we're likely going to get a little warmer each of the next few days. It's 58 degrees in Bainbridge, 57 Quincy, 59 Thomasville and in Valdosta, but Tallahassee and Perry and Live Oak are all around 61 and we're going to find more morning temperatures this weekend hovering around 60 degrees, maybe a couple degrees either side. That breeze from the east noticeable at times, but nothing that we call windy. It's doing a pretty good job of stirring things up this morning, so we don't have a lot of fog to deal with over the next couple of mornings. Some patchy fog is a possibility. 
on the satellite radar composite picture. There isn't a lot going on, not around here, and there probably isn't going to be anytime soon. Big bubble of high pressure, still our big weather player, and as long as it stays where it is, and it should for a couple of days, it'll promote more of that east wind and it'll limit where any of this new energy can go. Now, over the next few days, some changes in the upper part of the atmosphere, that area of high pressure finally starting to break down. That'll open the door for a little bit, maybe to see some progress of this boundary. And if there's anything left of it by like Tuesday or Wednesday of next week, Maybe then we can look for some changes to the forecast. Of course, I know a lot of us may not want some changes because we've got plenty of the good stuff on tap for the weekend and beyond, and we really had it for most of the week. Future cast shows maybe a few clouds sort of sneaking in on some of those east breezes. I guess an isolated sprinkle east of I-75 is possible, but I'm not counting on any rain chances over the next couple of days. I'm expecting mostly sunny skies to continue and those warming and slightly more humid conditions to continue too. Lots of sunshine over the Gulf. This is where the breeze will probably be the strongest. Those winds out of the east 12 to 22 seas 2 to 4 feet. So if you've got the boating plans this weekend, it's going to be a little bit choppy out there at times. The UV index this weekend is going to be very high. That means 15 20 minutes tops unprotected skin will burn. So make sure you get that sunblock on and notice that water temperature back up to 71 now. So it's going to start climbing a little bit faster, a little bit farther too. 50s and 60s this morning. Sun will be up just after seven. Mostly clear should be a lovely start to the day and let's shoot for the mid 80s. I think 83 84 85 is where we likely get with mostly sunny skies tonight. It stays pretty clear overnight temperatures real close to 60 degrees, maybe a couple of degrees either side. And over the next seven days, I don't see a lot of opportunities to get wet. I'm hoping Tuesday's the one. Got a lot of thirsty lawns, gardens, and greens out there that could use some more rain. We haven't had rain since this past Monday, so do the math. That's like seven or eight days. That's a little too long between showers. But right now, I don't see any rain chances today, tomorrow, or Sunday. So all the outdoor weekend plans are looking good. Just bring a little cold water with you. It's going to be a little toasty out there, especially in the afternoons. I do think those middle and upper 80s are a real possibility.